Welcome back to We Still Like Each Other, the podcast. I'm Travis. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the podcast where we show that the honeymoon phase can last forever. Forever and ever. What up, baby? What up, daddy? We got some people in here. We do? I don't know. It's a little cramped. <laughs> it's tight. It's a little tight. It's we're, we're bumping knees over here. <laughs> so we have the lovely, the lovely couple, Tabitha and Pete Fields. Mm. Welcome. What's up? Thanks for having us. Yes. Thank you for being here. Like, thank you so much. It's been such a crazy day and it's the end of the night. And for us, this is like crazy. Like, I feel like I'm 21 again, staying up this late. We break, break at night. night. We break <laughs> at night. Let's get on Uvu. No, thank, we thank, break at night. Thank God y'all are here because if y'all weren't, we'd be like falling asleep. I'd be like, night. no, never mind. We're recording tomorrow morning. <laughs> but before we keep going into our tangents, I just wanted to introduce you to because... It's like, why are y'all here, right? So the reason Tab and Pete are here is because they're a couple that I think our listeners would resonate with, um, and you'll see why. But they've been married for six years. They got married at the age of 21, which is, like, insane. And we have so many young listeners, and sometimes I'm like, I can't believe I got married at 25. They got married at 21, so... That'll be interesting to hear about. They also have a a two-year-old daughter. (laughs) Yes, they have a two-year-old daughter, so they're also parents. They've been homeowners. They moved to a different state. They started a business. And they still like each other. So (laughs) she she hyping us up. Like we really (laughs) somebody we did things. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) At such a young age. Like they're under 30 and y'all have accomplished so much. And y'all still like each other, which is big that's an impressive resume i feel like i need to do more <laughs> i'm good that we was did really good cool. yeah. we did i right <laughs> and did okay. honestly they are our friends but this podcast is really important to us so we don't have just anyone on the show um it has to make sense so it's not like oh we'll have a good time chit-chatting like does it make sense for our audience and a hundred percent. Like I've been waiting for a moment for this to happen and I'm so happy that it's here. Same. <laughs> so remember how we first met? Mm, mm, so mm. we're having a full circle moment with how we first met and today. today. Yeah, it's so, crazy. So let's talk about how we first met first. Mm. <laughs> so so do you do you wanna do you wanna explain? Um I mean, I can. So last fall around exactly this time last year maybe like a week or so of Mm -hmm. a difference i had been running my fall minis for tabfields photography and steph booked a session she was pregnant Mm -hmm. with river i wasn't here yet and they were like our second to last or something like that they were running late. We hadn't met in person. No, we this hadn't This was our met. first time meeting in person. Uh-huh. Did you already follow her on the gram? Yeah, yeah. That's how yeah. we like okay, did. Okay, that's how okay, we were okay. able to book her. Because uh-huh. um, we like would chit chat like back and forth through messaging and whatnot. Just on random stuff. And then she booked in. I was like, oh, that's really cool. We'll get to meet them. Mm-hmm. And like I always thought they were so cool. And they were late, I think. Mm-hmm. They were. And say say then, it with your chest, man. Nah, so, I think they were late. No, we were late. No, no, no. <laughs> you can say it. They were late. A lot of people were late. So, yeah. but they pulled up late, and I remember seeing them. I'm like, "Yo, they're drippy." <laughs> and my job, while Tab does the uh, the photography, I'm kind of there's the hype man, give a little bit of comedic relief, yes. and uh, and also capture like some videos for some reels and whatnot, exactly behind the scenes stuff to promote the brand. So I'm like. All right, I, I, this is easy to hype up. They look good. The, the colors are coordinated. Eli's hair is immaculate. <laughs> um, so I'm like, this this is super easy. So I'm like, yeah, oh wow, nah. He came through. I'm pointing at Trav, right? Because I I usually like to target the people that seem the stiffest or maybe have a little, I don't edge. know, yeah, a little edge mm-hmm. to them that that don't necessarily want the, their photos taken. So I'm like, this is an easy target. He's drippy. He's a dude. He looks good. He's handsome. He's well dressed. I'm like, nah, yo, he's got the fly sneakers on, blah blah. And he's just like, yeah, thanks, bro. I'm like, <laughs> this might be a little bit more difficult than I thought. Yep. Um, so we're like, this is our first time meeting you guys, and we know you have the podcast and everything. So we're like. Damn, expecting people that are easy to talk to yes yeah, so we're like this is gonna go great they're so like nice 
And we get there, and I'm like, oh, maybe they hate us. I, I like, was like, the, they are we hate horrible? Us. I'm like, damn, am I not doing my job as their photographer? Well, I was like second guessing my whole life for those <laughs> 20, 30 no, minutes. It was not that bad. It, <laughs> for us, the feel. Like, it was the feel. So, the, this is where the shoot went great. Travis had his moments of being passive aggressive because he says it wasn't bad. We're because attacking the crap out of Travis. He was right now. just quiet. <laughs> he wasn't really saying anything, but with passive aggression, you say a lot. It's just not with words. Yeah. So he doesn't like to be late. I've mentioned that on the podcast. We were running late and probably I had to do makeup. I was pregnant, whatever. Then we didn't realize when we got there, there was also more of a little walk. It was a walk. So me thinking like, oh, we're like right on That's time. It's like, no, we weren't right on time. So then he was just frustrated. He doesn't like to be late. And again, his version of frustrated isn't he doesn't yell. He doesn't say anything. He just gets like very, what's the word for that? Stoic. Stoic, but like, I don't know. He's also dry. like fuming though. Like you can kind of Yes, you can feel, feel it. What the fuck is going on? Because <laughs> hey, I, you're a great guy. I love you. Right. We love you now. I love you now. But I thought you hated me. No, I don't I don't I guess, you know, that's your version of what happened. You know, there's their side, <laughs> my side, and the truth. No, I and... <laughs> I appreciate y'all saying that because the way he his version of being upset is very quiet. Mine's is loud, so then it just appears that I'm angry more often, right? Because it's more obvious to people, right? right. But it's like, no, that shit is uncomfortable as fuck too. It's just on it just the low, looks different. It looks different. So yes. I thank y'all because if he would have been like, no, I was totally fine. I don't know what you're talking about, and since I can't say you said X, Y, and Z, I look like I'm fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. I want to so we for, I want to formally apologize on our platform. <laughs> Tabitha, it. Pete, more so to you, Tabitha. You were the you were the you were the photographer and I brought down the vibes and, <laughs> and I apologize. I have been if anyone's been watching this podcast, you know I'm a work in progress. <laughs> That's right. Day one, Travis, to day whatever this is. <laughs> it's night and day. <laughs> and I hope that we, we're in a better place now. Yeah. I, mean, I think so. I mean, I mean, we're sitting here. Wait, wait. But, <laughs> so. but we definitely are, right? Because to compare, we did our another another round of fall minis today. Mm-hmm. And they showed up a little late. <laughs> right? But, <laughs> Trav, in some areas. but Trav felt completely different I, when he arrived. I shook it, right? I was like, I'm not yes. going to do this again. Because how did I greet you? you I'm like, like, Trav, are we good? He was shake like, it off you now. Said, Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Trav, did we shake it off yet? And he's like, Why are you greeting me like that? And I was like, Oh, time, we were a little late because of traffic. And mm-hmm. I was like, yes. How are you doing in the car? He goes, I'm not doing well. <laughs> he That's was honest. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see, you put words to it versus before. Uh-huh. You yes. would have been like, I'm fine. And recovered well. Nothing. I guess the drive was a little yeah. longer. He had a little longer <laughs> little, time. Yeah, time. I, it's funny because we got about 30 minutes away and we were in our old neighborhood. I was like, fuck, like if we were still living in the oh, Bronx. We, we would have found another reason to be yeah. late. We would have thought we had more time. Yeah. It's, like, oh, yeah. It's, it's only something. 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. But between last year's fall shoots and this year's fall shoots, we reconnected. We met at a, we bumped into each other at a kid's birthday party and I don't know. We spoke for like five minutes and yeah. the vibes were there. And y'all were like, y'all want to come hang out? And then that turned into literally us talking for like four hours straight. Yes. Facts. Which is not something we do often because we're super like we'll chill with people and whatever. But like to bring people into our home where like our daughter is and stuff is like a huge thing for us. Mm-hmm. It's like a place we protect with yeah. like everything that we have. So I had to like whisper to him at the party and I was like, I really want to invite them over. <laughs> and I had to wait till you guys were like on the other side of the party. Uh-huh. And he was like, all right, I mean, like is the house together? And I'm like, it's fine. We'll set outside. Like we'll chill. Like we can pick up beers. I, we, we could do this. I'm mm-hmm. like, let's just do it. Like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm-hmm. Let's just do it. And then I was like, but I had a big fear that day 
And I told him, I was like, what if they say no to us? Like, I just felt like I would be oh, crushed. The rejection. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's scary. I'm like, I'm, that's a big, like, thing that, like, I'm being vulnerable about. Like, to my home. Ask, yeah. And to step up and ask you guys, like, mm-hmm. the first time we meet up after this. Honestly, it could have easily been a no. Only I, because yes. it was a Sunday. Yes. I had work the next day. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know what else? I thought it was one of those, like, invites that you hope people turn down. You know how sometimes people you like come over. You to be kind, to yeah. be nice, but then they don't really want you to go. I'm like, they don't do that. Do they really want to host us on a Sunday evening? And we're gonna oh, make we, sure we would not. We ask. Would. I was like, and not we ask. Had, and I had Eli and the baby. I'm like, mm, us ask. and our two kids. Like, what do they really want us to go? Like, if we say yeah, they're gonna be like, oh fuck. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> y'all, y'all know now. I don't play about work. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I could get if you know how you do to start doing the calculation. If I close my eyes at this time, I'm gonna get yes. three hours and fourteen minutes. <laughs> oh my god! So and I was like, "Fuck it, let's just let's just do it," you know. And hearing that you were all moving, so that was yes. another thing. We're like, they're moving. We were a couple soon. like two, two, weeks. Weeks. two weeks. Yeah. yeah. So we were like, if we don't take advantage of lifetime. this opportunity, and I knew Travis fucked up the first time we met y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We're again. back. Here we're we back. Again. So I knew we had making up to do, even though. It was just me being crazy, but y'all confirmed the truth that y'all thought he was an asshole that day. I didn't think he was an <laughs> asshole, but you know, I'm I mean, like, I just thought he didn't like me. It was, yeah, it wasn't even like a personal thing, but mm-hmm. like either we suck or they were beefing before. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, honestly, I saw Pete's beard and I was fucking jealous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was it, baby. You can't come anymore. That's what it is. You can't I'll come shave. anymore. <laughs> All right, so before we move into Did You Know, I just wanted really quick to talk about Tab Fields Photography because you're super talented. We, this is our second shoot with you, and I just wanted you to shout yourself out before we move on. Say it to the people. <laughs> <laughs> so Tab Fields Photography is a photography platform where I celebrate, encourage, and document women Okay. specifically. Um and I wanted to curate it where I was able to document a woman in kind of any stage of her life. Because mm-hmm. for us as women, every stage is kind of pivotal for us. Whether you're getting into a relationship, whether you're single and want to start a business or just celebrate yourself for a birthday. Like those are still important milestones, just like engagement, marriage, maternity, and then different milestones of your children and mm-hmm. your family and whatnot. And I didn't want to just stick to one because as a woman myself, each one was important for me and I want to celebrate that with other women. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of how it was birthed and has grown to I love it. being what it is today. Mm-hmm. And my Instagram's at tab.fields. <laughs> I love Wait, that. Um, because it reminds me of like when you talk about like if you post, I'm pregnant, you get a million people commenting, liking. But then if you're like, I'm starting a photography business, I'm starting a podcast, or I started a business, you get like crickets, mm-hmm. and then, you know, nice. not enough support. Well, well I, I always say, and you say this too, like, I don't think you should ever support blindly. Like, yeah. just because, right. like, just because Tab, me right. and her hung out that one time, mm-hmm. I need to book a session. But I will say, like... But in terms of just saying, like, celebrating it, like, congratulations on this step in your encouraging life. Yeah, yeah, encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Even, even taking the step, even if you sucked. Like, yeah. But I say all that to say you are, you have an amazing talent. Like, yeah, absolutely. And not just because Thanks, we've guys. become friends. Like, <laughs> even before we were friends, like, you, you, you have it. So, you know... I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and to see where you, you've even evolved. So yeah. that's still impressive. Yeah, we booked the session before we knew you. Before we knew we liked you. <laughs> Personally, <laughs> Pretty true. So just based yeah. off your yeah. work. Um, and so, yeah. I'm saying that also to say, if you check her out, it's not just because she's our friend. Like, we booked you before we were friends. So That's true. Yeah. Thank um, you. You should be proud of yourself. I appreciate that. All There's right. a lot of times that yeah. I'm like, oh, like... Is this good? And he's like, babe, like, look at this. And honestly, not just the photos, the experience. Because even with Travis being an asshole that day. <laughs> <laughs> the whole episode, this guy can't <laughs> escape it. I think, I think I got a title for the episode. Uh, <laughs> even with that, I, I was talking so much about, like, how well you two work together. I'm like, Pete was, like, awesome being there, like, helping with the <laughs> vibes, like, just That's making us feel for. comfortable. Yeah. Even with Eli, like, yeah. Eli gravitated towards you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it just was it worked well i'm like oh this is a team like this yeah. isn't tab fields photography isn't just you it's mm-hmm. the unit and it was evident i loved it which also we love that's we a love big love and yeah. commitment and working together so mm-hmm. that was awesome so kudos to y'all thank you thanks y'all facts <laughs> did you know daddy are you ready i'm ready <laughs> did you know Did you know more than half of married women do not actually believe that their husbands are, in fact, their soulmates? (laughs) What what an interesting angle, Trav. Okay. Um, You all inspired. No, I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) Why today? No, but I I think there's something to that. Um, What do you? What's your take on it? Why do you think that? I don't personally believe in like soulmates. I think that's a little, you know. That gets into like ast- mm, um, yeah. astronomy and shit like that. <laughs> Y'all know. He's got my special number. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, but it's possible. Or, you know, sometimes you, you know, I'm, we've had people write in like they're with someone that they kind of settled for. Mm. Or not settled for, like maybe the person they really want to be with they know isn't good for them. Mm. And but they, that doesn't make that person they want to be their yeah. s- soulmate. Right. Again, you have to believe in soulmates yeah. to want to believe the fact. But I guess. I thought about that, about the settling part. I also thought about how marriage is more than loving someone. Like, it has to work for your Mm -hmm. life in general, right? So maybe everything else that works for you is more important than that love feeling, that lust, that connection. Mm. Do y'all believe in soulmates? Nah. I don't think so. Nah, not me. So what is a what do we how do we define a soulmate? Yeah, I'm like yeah, I'm, I'm like questioning myself. Like a soulmate is it just like a predetermined yeah right person predestined for person? You. Mm-hmm. Which I I don't know about that. A soulmate, <laughs> a person ideally suited to another as a close friend or romantic partner. So that it says a wrong. person what ideally, ideally suited. Ideally. A soulmate is a person with whom one has a feeling of deep or natural like affinity. This may involve similarity, love, romance, platonic relationships, comfort, intimacy, sexual sexuality, sexual activity, spirituality, compatibility, and trust. So anything under the sun. Yeah. yeah. So I guess. Uh, I, so so if that's the case, you're my soulmate then. Yeah. With that we're definition. With those right? definitions, yeah. we're so even we're us as friends, soulmates. right? Yeah. So it, it sounds like it's not predetermined, right? Like yeah. you okay. don't, you're not born and then Tab is born and like you're destined for each other. Got it. So married. now it makes it sad that stat. If fifty percent of women don't feel like they're with their soulmate, but I think though they're probably looking at it the way I'm kind of describing it, where mm-hmm. it's like there's someone out there who's like the Redestance. most compatible person yeah. for you, and and all that leads to FOMO. Word. It leads mm. to fear of commitment because you keep thinking like there might what be if, something yeah. better. Yeah. Like what if door open to like the there's yeah. somewhere there's someone out there that's gonna just be able to read my mind and know exactly better. the temperature I like my coffee and like not be an asshole on photo shoots and then you just <laughs> be and then you'll be waiting forever and ever. So you know sometimes you just gotta settle for the asshole. <laughs> Oh, try this episode. Bro, try. We're cooking you today, if the, bro. If this wasn't all my equipment right now, I'd <laughs> fling this shit. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like the that. attack on Trav stops now. It stops. It stops. I'm sorry. I got I'm done. You, Trav. I'm done with it. I got you. I have a attackable face. So. I got you. <laughs> but yeah, my point is this whole idea, this false idea or unrealistic idea of a soulmate leads people to not be able to commit because they're always thinking that there might be something better. The grass is not always greener on the mm-hmm. other side. Mm-hmm. Nah. Yeah. I, that, it doesn't sound realistic because I think that the better um, is just based off of the work that, that, mm. the, that the person is willing to do. Right. Because there are plenty of things that tab may have wanted from me or just wanted out of a spouse that I didn't know, but it wasn't until we gained it or I gained enough experience to know like, okay, she likes this done this way, or she feels loved most when there are acts of services uh, that are done. Oh, so you can become someone's soulmate with time. Yeah. Based I guess, on I guess, yeah, definition. Yeah. Based off his definition. Yeah. yeah. yeah or yeah, yeah. off the internet's definition. He didn't come up with it. Don't come for my baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This just switched <laughs> real quick. What, 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 what just happened? But yeah, I, I think I think uh, it's just based off of the the amount of work. Just because in the beginning, like for us, I wasn't I was a shitty husband. 
mm. to be quite honest. Well, y'all were babies. Yeah, but like still though, it was something that we really, really wanted. And I didn't, I, even at 21, I didn't necessarily feel like a little youngin. Like I, for a while, I knew I wanted to get married. We're pretty mm. sure about that. Uh, but I knew that why? was going to take work. Now, now that y'all there, we're here. Yeah. Why? Why at 21 you decided to get married? And I love it. Listen, yeah. y'all listen to the show. Like, I love it. Um, I know there's a bunch of 21-year-olds having kids, right? But right. then they're too afraid to get married. Right. So I love it. And I'll also add one more to that. You don't really see people of color doing that. Yeah. Right. Like, that's normal for that's a good you know, point. I never white people, about that. Yeah. but people of color is like you know baby shower. I've never and yeah. then mm -hmm. and with people of color, at least my family is like as soon as you're like living together, people just start seeing your husband and wife, mm. but mm -hmm. no one sees the need mm -hmm. to like yeah. actually mm -hmm. become husband and wife. Yeah. But for you all, why? Why at 21 you were like we need to be married? Well, I'm just gonna add in a little fact. We met when we were 13. Mm -hmm. We kind of did a little middle school date in. She was my little boo. Low <laughs> um, that didn't last long. Yeah. Um, we won't talk about why. But um, so we went our separate ways. And in doing so, like we had like significant relationships in between. And I think growing out of that, and I always felt like, more mature than my age mm -hmm. or whatever um and i knew what i wanted out of my next relationship like i'm not getting in a relationship until i know for sure that whatever mm -hmm. and we got back in contact and we clicked like we were 13 again mm -hmm. like at what, what age 20 19 20 yeah, yeah about 19 20 wow. yeah yeah i think it was like 20 probably 20 um and yeah, like, it was just, okay, like, I want to pursue him. Mm -hmm. He was pursuing me. <laughs> a little too much in the beginning. I was, per I, I, was <laughs> I was okay. I was a little lusty. I was mm. very just, like, like, Booty I knew. hours. Okay. Mm. I worked for Domino's. No, like, it was, you can't it, I was, use the oh, sorry. I worked story. for, I, okay, listen. Wait, wait, wait. I was doing what, late night, I was doing late night deliveries, and, uh, and oh, I was, like, trying to deliver the D. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Listen, I got off of work at like 3 a.m. constantly. Mm. So I would hit her up like, yo, what's up? I'm, like, I'm, I'm in, in your, your neighborhood. Hood. Can you like come out or whatever? Did you like at least two, bring three her pizza? in the morning. I would try. I never did it. I never met up. With, I was either asleep because okay. if you know me, I'm asleep. <laughs> um, or I was like, if I was up, I was like, I don't know what this nigga thinks this is, but mm -hmm. it ain't happening. It's not yeah. Going down so because it was still beginning. Like we hadn't really met up and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I was like, um, no. Yeah. Well. Uh, so I was hitting you up because I wanted to pursue you. Yes, I truly, I really wanted to have sex with you really bad. <laughs> Honestly, it was something I wanted to do since eighth grade. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. But, but I also knew that, like, yo, the next woman that like I'm really feeling, I want it to be legit. I'm not mm -hmm. about to waste the rest of my time or like next few years of my life just dating around or whatever. But 21. And 20, 20, 20, 21, 20. 20. But what, okay, so what, what were your experiences before that that made you come up to that like, yo, the next woman, I, I got to get my shit together or it's going to be like my forever? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, I had a previous, I had a, I had a previous relationship that lasted a while and she i mean for for a while i thought like she was going to be the one like i'm going to marry her but things got flipped upside down and the people that knew me most knew and were were confident enough to tell me like dude this is toxic mm. she's not helping you in any kind of way she's not helping you in your walk and in your faith um mm. as well she it, it's just not good for you yeah. and, and i heard it from multiple people that didn't even know each other um and i was like okay this is probably a sign and i also i just got to sit with it i broke up with her and I had my little, I had a whole phase, run. right? This is like, this <laughs> is like the rest run. of the I was had a little baby college, whole phase. A little baby college whole phase. Oh, yeah. And I was like, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. um, and also just from a young age, like as a kid, I knew I wanted to be a husband. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be a dad. This was something that I was like, I don't care what age it ends up being. It's probably going to be early. I kind of knew that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I find someone that's on the same, the same page with me, and if, if, it looks like we are willing to grow into that space, then yeah, this is the one. And Tab happened to, happened to be that person. On my side of things, I kind of felt 
well, I still feel like I'm a relational person. Mm. I feel like that was just normal to me, or at least what I thought at 2019, 16, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but my previous relationship was like four years long. Um, I started when I was like 16, mm-hmm. 15, 16, and it got toxic. Mm. From the beginning, there was constant cheating. Mm. Um, Why were you cheating on him? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> wish. Um, so, but I was so young and like infatuated and whatnot. And then like got really close to the family. And I just felt like that's just what I was going to be involved in. Mm. And you that, were going to just put up with it forever. Yeah. Until it got semi physical. Mm. My phone was like thrown, broken, like when my nails broke. So, red it was flags. a whole thing. And I had like kind of like a trigger flashback. And I was like, if I continue down this road, I'm going to end up like my mom and my dad. Mm. And I knew his background and I knew my background. And I was like, that's not the life that I want to live. Yeah. And immediately, like, maybe not immediately, but eventually I was like, I don't want this. And yeah. I kind of just you broke pulled it yourself off. Out yeah, I pulled myself out before it got so like I was harmed or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went on a little whole phase. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't in college, but I still did it. Um, <laughs> Cause I was 16 when I got into that relationship. Yeah. Like I did nothing. And so I kind of just lived life a little wild and then it got a little too wild. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna stop my shit. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting into a relationship until I know I'm gonna get married. Mm-hmm. And the next guy who delivers a pizza here. <laughs> If it's three in the morning and he's got a pepperoni pie, yeah. I'm gonna marry him. So just vibing yeah. and like we met up. So things happened. Fast forward, yeah, man, y'all connected. Who's who brought up marriage first? It was mutual. It was mutual. Because know. from the beginning, like yeah, sounds like which us. is why we were able to move at the speed that we did at the age that we did. We had goals. We expressed our goals with each other and they aligned. Mm. What we both wanted out of life foundationally was the same. And we both wanted marriage. We both wanted like longevity in a relationship and we wanted to grow. Um, We had the same faith background. Mm. So like everything was just right and it all felt right. So it was like, why not? Like, what's the point in waiting? What's the point in making it a big shinding? Mm -hmm. Um, We were young. We didn't have money to make it a big shinding anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I love you. I want to be with you. So why not? It was pretty on brand for us anyway. because (laughs) On brand. (laughs) On brand. Just because a lot of the way that we live our life, even to this day, just, you know, uh, as as we're uh, married, it's really like I could not care two shits about what someone says Mm -hmm. we are going to do it our way and we're going to make it work so that was like our approach to our relationship and it's also our approach it's carried out everything that we do it's been like at the foundation of what we feel like you make your decisions like more with emotion like from the heart or like are y'all more logical he's logical i'm emotional Mm. so it's a good thing we can balance each other out okay. so we're not making like completely irrational decisions. Yeah. They probably weren't the smartest at 20 and 21. Yeah. But like now at 27, we've worked through some of that. And some of it we look back at and we cringe. Um, but it was still what we wanted to do and we honored what we wanted together mm. and we went with that, with what made us happy and what we thought would make us happy in the future mm-hmm. and we worked it out. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> sounds horrible, but <laughs> no, it doesn't sound horrible. I think it it sounds a lot like us in terms of in the beginning, we just were both like, we want to be together. We love each other. We want to get married. Like, let's just like, do it. What can we do? What can we do to prove to the world? Like, we just <laughs> wanted to be together and we were both in previous relationships. Yeah. Um, him in a longer one. Mine's not as long, but I had a child, you know. Right. right. But None of those relationships were really considering marriage or any of those things. And yet with us, it kind of just was like, let's do it. Like it just felt right. How Mm -hmm. how long was it? Um, I I believe you guys might have might have said it before, but how long was it like on you know, from Um, dating to marriage? so from when I slid in his DMs to the engagement, it was like eight months. But between then it was like he still had the ex Mm. and it was like drama. It was layered. It was like a lot (laughs) going on. So it was really 
September, October, like about three months of us like really together before he proposed. Right? Sheesh. Did it right across the street there? Yeah. Really? But how old were you guys? I was 25. Okay. 26. Mm-hmm. Okay. Damn, no, you were like 20. Us. I'm two years older. You're two years older than me. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he old. <laughs> yeah, it was 2015. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. What a year. Yeah. So. And I felt ready and like 25, 27 felt like this is what people do. But now at 32, I'm like, damn, we were babies. Like, right. Because yeah. you just grow. Right. Like, yeah. yeah for things we just were change. saying it the other day because our anniversary just passed and we've been reflecting a lot the last couple of days. We're like, everybody who knew or that we told at that time probably thought we were crazy as shit. But our parents and which are the people that kind of mattered at the mm-hmm. time. Well, they still matter. But with a decision, mm-hmm. they didn't give us pushback and they trusted us and kind of just went with it with us at 21. Did, yeah. you, did you have a big um, like proposal? <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> your proposal story, weird. But I'll tell you anyway. First of all, ringless. Right. Okay. I, I, okay. Ringless. Okay. Ringless. Yeah. I yeah, love so. that. Not even a ring pop. Nothing. Not a ring pop. Wait. What? Are you gonna share? <laughs> get, get, get. Oh, you want to tell him my outfit? No. Oh, I he wore a Stone Cold Steve Austin T-shirt. <laughs> That's she'll, okay. she'll never forget it. That's actually a pretty fire shirt. Right? I got a seashell okay. instead of a ring. Okay. It was sentimental and it meant something. But a seashell. Okay. You said put your ear to it. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear them making like, a ring. The size of a dime kind yeah. of seashell. Uh, like okay. we could have done a bigger one. It was from an important one, trip that we took together. Yes. But honestly, it was, uh, it just happened. It, I think we had like, like left an evening church service or whatever. I just kind of felt the stirring within because I've been questioning it for a while. I even spoke to like my closest friends like, yo, do you guys feel like, like I should pursue this or whatever? And they're like, Yeah. I, I I mean, I think you're good. I'm like, I feel pretty sure of myself. So anyways, uh, we, we went home. Uh, I think Tab was in a bathroom and I like lined up the hallway with candles, which mm-hmm. then led into the room. And I tried to make it like a heart shape. And I was oh, there with a blazer, a, a shirt, some <laughs> basketball shorts <laughs> on one knee with a, a little shell that a meant a lot shell. to us. And, and, and yeah, then I proposed. Aww. All right. Before we move on, I, I feel like... It might sound like I'm asking the same question over and over. Yeah. But why marriage? Like, there had to be some sort of influence. Because I think even if I had met Travis at 21, I think I would have been like, we want to get married eventually. But I feel like my brain at 21 wouldn't even consider it as a possibility. And you also point out the fact that our brains aren't even fully developed. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. just learn that. You know, and then yeah. I I sometimes think that the reason we move so fast is that we were a little older and I had a child. Mm. So it was like, yeah. I'm not messing around. Like, we together or we not together. Yeah. But I feel like at 21, it would have been like, yeah, I want to be with him forever. But not actually yeah. think marriage. So was there a certain influence or like something like what someone you looked up to or what was it? I think for me, it's that I came from a very broken home, a broken marriage. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why specifically, but I always wanted a happy home with like kids running around. Like I wanted to live that as a child. And I felt like my only way to redeem that was to be an adult and create the life that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, And finding a partner to do that with was important. And I really wasn't like, that was kind of just one of my main goals. So like, I wasn't crazy about like hanging out and I wanted to travel. That was my biggest thing. But aside from that, it was to create a life that I loved and that I always wanted to live. Yeah. And and importantly, <laughs> sorry, is um to show the world that not all marriages end up broken, mm. especially when they start at a young age. Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure in that, though? No, no. I've never felt pressure. Okay. I think even if there's a little pressure instilled on myself, Mm -hmm. that pressure has held us together. Mm, I like that. 
I think since you are for what it appears to be like meant to be, you know what I mean? Soulmates. So- Soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I do also think that sometimes for people, if they come from a broken marriage or divorce impacted them in like a negative way, that they kind of force themselves to stay in yes. relationships that yeah. no longer suit them. So I, it could be, it could go wrong, but I feel like for you all, the pressure is like pushing you all to grow and be better for each other versus like pressure to just stay together just for the sake of staying together. If I that think makes sense. also, or the complete opposite where you avoid marriage and commitment at all mm. costs. Um, Cause my brother is that type. he's like i'll never get married mm. because it was so broken and like i guess traumatizing which i completely understand mm-hmm. but i think you kind of just lean one way or the other and i just kind of leaned in towards like i'm just gonna make it the best that i can that kind of reminds me of what we spoke about last week like how you react to your trauma is gonna make or break you right mm. and there are two extremes one is you're resisting it 100 percent, like your brother is i guess like I'm not going to get married. Like, no, 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 no. Um, One, you could also repeat the same cycle. Like, you're going to end up in a broken relationship. You're going to give up just like your parents did. Or you find a happy medium. And I feel like maybe you all are doing that. Like, you're finding the happy medium. Like, you're learning from your experiences. You're not repeating them. But you're also not running away from it. Right. Right. All right. And we have a lot more questions for you all, but guess what? What up? We have a sponsorship. We got to pay some bills, baby. Let's do it because we got, <laughs> we got lots of bills. <laughs> all right. So first, I want to say that this sponsorship, someone messaged us asking, like, how do I get a sponsorship? And I was so flattered, but I said, honestly... I don't want to lie to my listeners, so I need to try your product first for at least a two-week period because I'm not going to be inauthentic. And thankfully, they agreed and were like, sure, no problem. Sent us some product. We've been using it, and now I feel comfortable to tell you all about it. Hell yeah. (laughs) So this episode is sponsored by Cloud9 Butters, and that's at Cloud9, the number nine butters on Instagram and cloud9butters.com. So it's a homemade skincare line and they make these body butters that are delicious, perfect now that it's fall, winter, like your skin is a little extra dry. And for me, I want to today I want to talk about this um scent is called a dozen roses because if you all listen to the podcast, I've talked about how I don't really like perfume and colognes like right. The smell is just way too strong. So this scent is like perfect because I Smells smell so good, good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm not giving myself a headache like mm. with the scent. It's yeah. like delicious. And we moved to New Jersey. I don't know. This Jersey water is different and my skin is like <laughs> extra dry. So when I use it, I feel like, okay, it's quenching the thirst that my skin has now. Could you? Would you agree? No, yeah. I'm sliding all over. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so Bro. check them out, Cloud9. <laughs> again, Cloud9, like the number nine, butters.com and on Instagram. And I definitely recommend the A Dozen Roses scented body butter. Pete? I got to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now getting back to you all, I'm just like so intrigued by just being married so young. But let's go into a question. You still like each other, right? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Depends on the day, but yeah. But you've even in the in the time we've spoken, you've talked about maybe at one point not being the best husband or having to grow, do things, right? <laughs> Why do you choose to make it work? Like what what makes you stop and say I'm not going to sit in this discomfort or in this stubbornness or I'm not going to be right? What makes you stop and choose to make it work? Can I go first? Yeah. <laughs> I have like two or three things. Okay. Um, I think it, the answer changes just slightly now because we have a daughter. Mm. Um, and it goes back to that broken home thing, right? Um, 
But one of the biggest things is that no matter what the situation has been, and we've been through some, <laughs> um, he still remains my home and my safe space. Ooh. And I think that's super important for me because it's like, we can work through this. I come home to you and I feel safe with you. And we just have that same energy. Like we're going to work this out. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to also what I said that we got married young and it's that small pressure of like, we vow to make this work no matter what. Um, and we're still in it to make it work no matter what. I and I'm going to give always, up over no small shit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I always said, like, I've seen also marriages that lasted 40 years or whatever the case is, and they were miserable. Mm. And I told him from the beginning, let's get all the shit out now. Let's art like, let it be difficult the first five years mm -hmm. so that the next 40 are happy and joyful. Mm -hmm. Cause there's always going to be hard stuff you have to go through. There's always going to be things that happen. Um, but I'm like, let's try to work as much as we can now work through the hard things so that we can live a joyous and happy marriage all the way through. Yeah. And I don't think it's like getting through the hard things. It's not like hard stuff stuff is going to stop yeah. after five years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the work that happens at the beginning is learning how to handle when the hard things come. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. what role am I going to play? What role is he going to play? Um, how are we going to handle our reactions when we're triggered? That's right. So when things come up, they're not making or breaking us. And that's the hardest work. And mm -hmm. I feel like even at a young age, that stuff is even harder because, you know, y'all y'all like to point out how old I am, <laughs> but I'm still figuring shit out right. at 32. I can only imagine at 21 figuring and you're trying to like, out. you're like, oh, we're making our marriage work. Like most people are like fucking, you know, barely remember to take a shower at that age. Like, <laughs> it's crazy because like you guys keep pointing out the fact that like this is like so uncommon. It's so not. But for us. It's felt so normal. Yeah, we were just living. And you guys it. keep like repeating it back, like at twenty one, and I'm like, oh. it didn't feel like that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to explain it to you. And maybe that makes it like meant to be or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, it's never felt abnormal mm -hmm. no. ever. Yeah, and it, for me, I just feel like at that age, marriage seemed unattainable mm. because I didn't feel worthy of it. Right, like I didn't think you hadn't met Trav yet. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Hi, you know, like I just felt like I was too much. Like no one would be able to deal with me, right? So I think part of me at twenty one was tucking away that little dream of a being a bride because I just felt like I believed I wasn't worthy of it. So why even think about it? Mm. You know, so I kind of tucked it down. I pushed it down. So the whole idea of being a wife just at that age really just was not on my mind you know mm -hmm. um but yeah do you want to add anything to like what brings you back to yeah um it for me it's uh let's just say we've had a tough week right where mm -hmm. maybe there's just some built up stuff that that's been unresolved and um, I always go back to just the beginning of like we said that we will make this work and we also agreed there is no back door. There is no out of this relationship unless there's fidelity, infidelity. Mm. Um, we communicated our boundaries. We communicated that. So mm -hmm. like that we established that if it if it falls, you know, into that category, then that's a different discussion. But otherwise, yeah, no, we we have to make this work. Well, hold on. So, you know, I hear you and I, I know like infidelity and there's a bunch of other stuff that could be like a, all right, this is a hard no and we're mm -hmm. ending this. But it's, that's not where the list ends, right? So there's like, there's abuse, there's financial abuse. There's a bunch of things outside of like the big one, which is infidelity. Right. But I'm just, I just, the messaging sounds like we're going to make it work no matter what. So is it that? Or are there little things that could say like, all right, well, this isn't working? Actually, you know, now that he brings that up, yeah, right? Because- we had a we had to have a tough conversation back in 2020. Uh, again, like how I said, I was being a shitty husband. Like I really was, but I was also just 
like like kind of like you said, my brain just really was I wasn't really woke until like a year and a half ago. <laughs> Not woke. Right? Um so we had to have a tough conversation just about me being like a pathological liar, also mm. setting uh a uh a false expectation of what this marriage was actually going to look like as far as our trajectory, what we were what I was going to be. Um I thought I was going to be a pastor. I thought we were going to be running a church. Um You said and, 2020? Yeah. Oh, there was an important conversation in 2018, the first time. Was mm. it? Yes. So there was a time in 2018, um, we lived in Wappingers, mm. and we got to a really unsafe space in our relationship. And this is when we started learning what safe and unsafe was, mm. what vulnerability was, what that looked like in our This is when um mentorship first right. came into play yeah. um a lot happened back then we were trying to salvage whatever it was we were only like a year and a half into marriage things got rough it was rough mm -hmm. um we were so young and whatnot but we sat down with a third party that was neutral mm -hmm. and they said what are your boundaries what are absolute no's list them all right now Take a minute. And or, you hadn't done it before. We had a never. A year and a half we into had marriage. Never. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was like. The honeymoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. She was like, put it all on the table. Like, whatever it is, openly communicate it and understand that from this day forward, that's what stands. Mm. And we literally had to. We took a couple minutes. Yeah. He got coffee, whatever he did. We sat. We came back to the table and we were like, all right. I think these are mine. And with the third person there, she was like, okay, do you mean this? Okay, what if it looks like this? And we had that tough, like, the, all those little things that fall under that, like, that's what we had to figure out and discuss. And from that day forward, and with vulnerability and boundaries, in those heated moments, we're like, wait, are we getting close to that boundary? Does this need to be stepped back from and revisited? Like, are you getting to that point? And we've gotten close mm -hmm. to the point, like, don't even get me wrong, but we've set those boundaries. And I mean, three years after that conversation, we're still four years. Um, that's what we live by yeah. when those moments get really, really tough. That's important because we often throughout the podcast is one of probably like our core values is that we need to still like each other. Yeah. And some people think like, oh, these young people, they'll throw away their marriage for anything. No, we're mm -hmm. not. Yeah. We're going to fight for our marriage. Yeah. But if we're not respecting each other's boundaries, like those little things yeah. mm -hmm. that seem little and people say you throw your marriage away for it. But no, nah. if it's continuous, if, mm -hmm. if someone's consistently mm -hmm. crossing a boundary that you have set, that's enough reason mm -hmm. to like, let it go. Yeah. So how how was it for you two years after that conversation? Now you're dealing, and you know you said this, but you're dealing with Pete being this pathological liar, which I'm sure is a boundary that was being crossed. Totally. That didn't come up in 2018 though, because it's not something no, well, no, you, you two think years about. After no, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, like, okay, okay, it you, hadn't been now. This is one of those things. Like you ask, what if it happens, and it's not something you discuss, and it falls right. outside of that, right? Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So that is actually what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think, oh, on the list, I'm put, if you lie to me, like... You weren't... I didn't know you were lying. Right. Or you would I didn't eventually. know I was right. lying. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. No, no, sorry, exactly. I, have to, I have to ask, like, what were you lying about? Everything, oh bro. It would just be the simplest things. Like, I don't know. Let's just say I went to the store to buy something and it was $25. And mm -hmm. then time would be like, oh, you got those shorts? Cool. How much were they? Eh, like nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. It Wild. was okay. So it sounds like well, very that, that's um, like low surface level, level yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was so ingrained in him that it wasn't like just your passive lie, but it became part of his identity. Mm -hmm. right. Um, it became part of our relationship and it got so much deeper, and I don't know how to fully explain that, but I started noticing it with surface things, mm -hmm. but then again with like a mentor and like sharing certain things we got deeper into like wait no his identity is rooted in this and he created a lie of reality mm -hmm. Ooh. yeah so that like, he was living and perceiving so like the way like you your life was bigger than it was type thing or yes yeah yeah that, that was a part of it and better like 
it was always sunshine, rainbows, and like super green grass for Pete. Mm. Like our life could be flames like that meme with the dog. And, it, it, it and sound, Pete would be like, it's fine. It sounds like that comes from like trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the toxic optimism uh, definitely comes from, from trauma. It was a trauma response that I was living in. Um, I like to pinpoint it back from like the age of like eight. It, it's it's where I feel like, you know, when you think of the inner child, right? Mm-hmm. That's like, that's the Pete that I see. Um, and it, it really just stemmed from, again, I, I was also in a broken home as well. And... In my home, it wasn't, I couldn't, you know how this fight, fight, fight or flight, right? I couldn't do either. So I had to dissociate. Yeah. Sink Which is in. Fawn, fawn, I think is yeah, the I think term, that's another term. terminology. Okay. Yeah. So basically kind of sink in uh, as like, I'm basically like a shell, right? And then I started to create uh, a better reality around me in mm-hmm. order to be able to get through the pain of what life was, mm-hmm. which meant- I became a really good liar, a really good storyteller, um, and basically just kept being extremely optimistic about life and so much so that like I kept growing with that, um, even to the point of like jumping into marriage. I didn't even know that I was still creating false narratives about life. It became your truth. Yeah. It just, yeah, his identity. Do you feel like it had been happening like from the time you guys reconnected or was it something that resurfaced back in 2020? Um, no, I mean, it was, I was, I was just like this. It just okay. always yeah, happened. Yeah, it was, he didn't it was realize it was happening. wrong. Right. And it was always, it was reinforcing in many different things just because of how good I, I was, you know, I was becoming mm. as well as I was, I was in sales. I am in sales and with sales, you can always tread the line of like, what's a lie and what's the truth, right? Mm. Schmoozing. So living in that space and then being successful from you it, were right? A fire salesman. Right? I was a great, <laughs> sal- I was a great salesman, but I was also a liar. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, I ended up uh, having a manager. Shout out T Dog. Um, I had a manager that pulled me aside one day, like, "You're a liar. Mm. I watch you on the sales floor. You lie. I don't. That I, I, we can't have that." Mm. So then that's when accountability started with him, and I was also approached by Tab, and I'm like, "Okay, something's not mm. right." within Mm -hmm. your professional and your marriage is like it's colliding Mm -hmm. they're both like whoa you are am i a liar (laughs) yeah and which is scary too right because operating in that space and then coming to like you know as a i don't know what was that like 23 or something like that 24 i didn't know who i was it's scary knowing that everything you've built up all the stories you told yourself over the years, unconsciously, has just been a lie. So who it's am kind of I? Like your shell or like your outside world just like crumbles apart because it was fake. Mm. And you know what's crazy? It's I talk a lot about when you acknowledge a uh, a truth about yourself that's hard to accept. Yeah. A, what a lot of people do is just say, "Well, this is just who I've always been." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they refuse mm-hmm. to change because they feel like mm-hmm. I've always been this way. Why change? Yeah. So I I can imagine that with acknowledging, like, "Oh shit, I've been a liar forever." It could have been easier to just continue to lie. Yeah. Yeah. I you mean, could've, you could have lied about stopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, exactly right. See, the 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 big kicker was in 2020 when Tab and I had a conversation. I'm thinking we're having a great day. We're in the Bronx. We went to Gyro King. <laughs> And uh, we're just eating food. And she's like, she's like, listen, this is an intervention. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't do this with you. Mm. You are a liar. And it is scary. There were mm. previous conversations. Yeah. I didn't just come out one day like I'm not doing this with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, There's things leading But we tried to have interference again with a third party. Um, we tried having conversations. Um, it got to a point where he was so unaware and continually doing it on like small levels and on big levels. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, maybe something's like not okay with him. Mm. Or had me questioning it. Like if I was and, mentally ill. Yeah. Because there are like situations that way. And we don't know if I didn't know if this was something that could be helped or not. Um, but it was scary for me. And I guess this is kind of the time where my age came into play mm-hmm. because I'm like, damn, I'm like 23, 24. I think I was 23. And I'm like, I don't know if this is something I want to deal with for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like I'm still this young. This is scary. Yeah. yeah. So I was scared for my future. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like, I know we said we stick it out, but 
I don't know about this one. Yeah. And I'm like, I have too much at stake for mm-hmm. my whole life to put on the line for this thing because it's not a small thing. Because next thing I know, I'm like 30, 40, and my whole life has been a lie. It's mm-hmm. been a joke or whatever. And I'm like, mm. like it. I could see it down the road for me. And I was like, this isn't something I could do. Yeah. And well, it, we've had moments like that. Was it that conversation that you were like, I'm going to turn it around? Or Absolutely. was it something else? So it was that conversation <laughs> and then a conversation that happened days later. So after that conversation, I was like, oh, she's dead ass, like going to leave me if I don't seriously get help or check what this is. Mm-hmm. So that that led to me going to um, our mentor and counselor and saying like, help me with this. Mm-hmm. But then- This was a Wednesday. This was a Wednesday. And then Sunday? I specifically told him on Wednesday, this is the situation. I don't know what this means for our marriage. But I'm telling you right now, I will not start a family with you like this. Mm-hmm. Because we had always said that at like 25 or something, we would look at starting a family. Mm-hmm. And and I say look, because I had I thought I was gonna have to need intervention for that. Um, so I was like, it will not happen it this will way. Not happen. And that was Wednesday. I found out I was pregnant Sunday. Wow. Yeah, so fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rough. Like I'm like, okay, I just began this journey of trying to figure out what is happening internally. How do I fix this? And now I'm like, oh, shit. She just told me she doesn't want to build a family with me like this. Mm -hmm. Um, But was on me. Right. But the thing was, there was also like I felt joy just because, you know, we we dealt with uh, with infertility for for a few years. And we also um, thought years down the line we're probably going to need to seek professional help Mm -hmm. so the fact that it happened naturally great what a blessing but while i'm feeling that and thinking all of it i had to look right back at tab after seeing the pregnancy results is right right in my hand i look right back at her and it's she's just bawling tears there's a lot of fear in her eyes there's tons of emotions and i'm like oh i I see like like even if I'm not with the liar forever. We got to raise a kid Ooh, together. <laughs> you're right. We're, we're in this. I struggled with two big yeah. things. Was that right? That I was like, oh shit, we're not well. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if we can handle this. But I also struggled with like, is this real? Because for so long I couldn't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I had two very big, heavy, emotional weights yeah. on me did, while telling him. Did you, did part of you feel like, fuck, I'm trapped? Yeah, I think initially I found out I was pregnant alone. Um, I took a random test in the bathroom while he was like in the kitchen or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I've taken a ton of pregnancy tests. And when I saw like the two lines, I was like, wait, something about this one seems different than the rest. Why, why, why were you taking them so often? Um, Because for a while um, with P and with Max, like I wasn't on like birth control. So... If anything was off, I'd be like, I feel mm-hmm. something. Let me just take one because I wouldn't know, but I was never pregnant. Gotcha. Um, and so I was like, wait, this one looks different. Take the thing back out of the like garbage. And I'm like, oh, shit. So immediately my heart dropped like this is exactly what I didn't want. And now I might be stuck. And this is really shitty. And Pete, for you, well, obviously you've changed, right? Yeah. But in the moment, I feel like it could have went one or two ways. Like, well, she's pregnant. Like, I uh, yeah, she's not gonna leave me now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or did you feel that pressure of like, I need a fast track? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it like just something clicked where I'm like, okay, I am not the man that I need to be for my wife, and I am not the man that I pictured I would be for like to raise a child. Mm. So I need, thanks. So I need, um, yeah, I, I need like a like crash course. How mm-hmm. do I fix this, right? So it, I didn't really know that it would come with a lot of pain, but it did. So one of the things that, that I did was uh, something that, that we kind of worked through with, with my mentor was I had to carry a book around. It was a little black book. <laughs> Every conversation that I have with, anyone this is during a pandemic so i was pretty much just i I went to work and i went home and it was only just a few people at work so i got to have conversations with them and every conversation that i had if i told a lie i would have to write it in a book 
And bring it back home to us. And bring At the it back time home. we were living with her. Mm. So it was kind of like really fast tracked and really close in because he couldn't escape it. His manager at work knew he was lying. We were living with a really close friend of ours and our mentor and I was there. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm a brain. So like, I know when your ass is lying. Right. I just know. Yeah. And I will catch him every time. If every I time. Knew, Obviously at work, I don't know. But mm-hmm. like he had to report back to us on a daily basis and we'd be like, all right, Pete, so how was your day at work today? It's painful. I think that's a good strategy when you're trying to break any habit because in one of the parenting books I was reading, it had me, I'm trying to work on my reactiveness, Mm. especially with my oldest, Eli. So anytime I yelled, I had to write it down. And it was like- you said that. It was like, why? What did you say? What could you have said? Wow. What did that feel like though? Writing that down. Just facing it. It's like, ooh, it's so painful. Yeah. What what was the process for you? Like, so you wrote down what you lied about. Yeah. So then now you have your mentor and your wife like, all right, what, were yeah, they asking what you why? It? or? Yeah. Um, it was like, why? Uh, which sucked even more because I'm like, I, I don't even really know why. Yeah. I'm just doing this just based off of autonomy. Um, so I hated facing the pain of writing it down. I hated having to go home and knowing like I got this list and no one's going to forget about it. We are going to meet after dinner or during dinner and be like, all right, what do you got for me today? Um, <laughs> and I have, you know, some, some people at, at work that like, I was kind of telling them like, this is the journey that I'm mm-hmm. on. I'm gonna keep it hundred with you. So I, I just couldn't escape it. Did, did you tell the manager? Yeah. 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 He was, he was all on board. And um, it's, there's this thing that happens. I'm like with the reading I've been doing is like, we create like pathways in our brain that things seem automatic. Yeah. Like you don't know why you're lying. You're just doing it. Cause you did it for so long, yeah. It's like natural, just like you never forget how to ride a bike because you kind of build that pathway in your brain, yeah. So it just is natural, even if you haven't done it in forever, it, you can easily like do it again. Yeah, I don't know. I was doing it often, <laughs> uh, but thankfully I got to a place where I'm like, this pain is not worth it. Yeah. How, um, how long was it until you uh, were able to leave the black notebook at home? A few months. Months. Yeah. I would say a few a months. months. Um, it started back in like May. And then I would say confidently by like August, mm. I, I I would write in it every, maybe every now and again, if something came up and I was like, shit. Mm. But mm. otherwise, yeah, I was like, I don't want this pain. And I know that I need to improve because this baby's supposed to be coming mm. December. Mm. Uh, it's so, uh, it's so interesting. And I'm sure people listening to this can feel what i'm saying but it's like it's almost like you're like quitting smoking yeah and you know people lie i've lied i don't think i've ever like had a problem like it was an itch like i need need to get this lie off and it's not like that's what you were dealing with and in in a way in a way but it's so and i know the way it sounds seems so generic but when you know the depth of it being so deep ingrained into his identity and even like the way he perceived his childhood i'd be like wait but you say it was like good in this area but actually you tell me all this happened how could it have been Mm -hmm. yeah and like facing like real things that create his identity and the perception of the world that he lives in and that was the issue not just because you were like oh i got 15 bucks in my pocket but you really got 12 yeah and i don't need that those little lies it's because it's a habit but yeah. what other bigger things are yeah. you actually lying about yeah exactly um and if you break it back to childhood i feel like most of us have needed to lie as mm-hmm. children right yeah. or even if we didn't need to lie we might have thought we needed to lie yeah and if you don't check it as you're maturing, it it stays with you. So it becomes your adaptive child. So yeah, yeah, I'm an adult, but I'm still following these patterns that are maladaptive from my childhood. And for some people that could be lying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but it could be other things that yeah. we're doing in a childlike state. Um, I think I've told Travis this story, but my my connection to lying as a kid. I remember I would lie in school and make up things I did on the weekend. Like if kids. I did that all the time. We were just talking about that. Like if kids were like, I went to the movies or I did this. Like I would like (laughs) 
try to relate and be like oh i did that too or i went here and like make up this thing even though my mom worked two jobs and i was helping her Mm -hmm. with my brothers and sisters Mm -hmm. and like the movies you were not going to movies i wasn't doing all those things but it just felt easy to seem relatable yeah and lie but then again i'm talking about elementary school stephanie there was a point where i was like fuck it i need to be myself one it was hard to keep up with lies i wasn't a good liar right because then they were like i thought you said you saw that movie Mm. i forgot that i said you know so i picked up that i wasn't really good at it but then i also (laughs) eventually i'm like my real friends are gonna like me for who i really am not whatever but for some people they don't have that moment yeah and like lying is just easier for them yeah you know you stay in that place what was the the turning point for you, Tab, where you were like, all right, I see we've, we've addressed the issue and he's doing the work. I'm going to not only stay with him, but I'm going to like, I'm going to choose to be happy. Right. Because, you know, what started out as like a potential end of your marriage, mm-hmm. you know, quickly because of the the pregnancy, you basic, basically forced his hand. <laughs> right? I have two answers. Um, I would say about like the couple of months mark where we got to a point where we had to have a conversation and he was like, okay, I haven't lied for X amount of time. Um, when are you going to start believing me? (laughs) And my backup answer to that is it's still a struggle today Mm. because it adapts. Right. It hasn't. It's been a huge progress, yeah. but it's, um, as our mentor would say, there's a couple of things in your life that are just ingrained into you at this point in life that you will struggle with for the rest of your life. Those that you have to work are still on, there. right? It doesn't mean you'll be like that forever, but it's just a constant thing you have to be aware of and constantly mm-hmm. work on. And I think for Pete, that's one of them because it can show up in so many different ways. Yeah. And it did recently, like in the past. It did. And I was on a couple of months. Yeah. yeah. So we had to get back in a group and regroup and be like, hey, I think this is happening. Mm-hmm. How do we address this? Um, what does that look like? And we did it again. So yeah. in a way, yes, after a couple of months, I realized, okay, things are getting better. He's putting in the work. Um, we had many conversations sitting down. Um, and it was, again, choosing, like, I see he's putting in the effort. I know he loves me. Um and I want this more than I don't want it. Mm. So, and I'm still his wife. I still love him. And it's my job. Well, I felt it was my responsibility. And in, in that time where I decided I want this more, then it became my responsibility to support him. Yeah. In that instead of becoming his attacker or questioning him all the time when he confronted me with like okay i've made this much progress i've done this much work when are you going to come in i was like damn he's right Mm -hmm. um so it's still my job now to support him and even if he needs correction and he needs help i do that in love because i've chosen this Mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of you know they say like the best apology is change behavior and Mm -hmm. you're seeing it like every day he's mm-hmm. he's actually working on it so it's like how can i not forgive him or n- yeah or not maybe forgiven is not the right word but at least be like empathetic to his right. struggle yeah well and said also you said you're a relational person right um yeah. a lot of issues in marriage is that people see themselves as individuals like i need to work on this you need to work on that and then we could be happy together whereas like honestly we need to work on shit together yeah so even though, yes, it was your struggle and your behavior that needed changing, Tab is like, I had a role in supporting you do that. And you worked together, which I think is yeah, beautiful. Yeah, foundationally, we learned when we started mentorship a year into marriage that we will work on each other individually mm-hmm. while simultaneously working together and supporting each other on our individual journeys Mm -hmm. um and that collectively becomes our journey together um so for after year one that's kind of been our thing um and we've done a good job and we have to be vulnerable and saying like hey this is what i'm struggling with in this season 
Um, that was that for his season and a little more seasons. Um, <laughs> but just like there's some really hard shit I was going through and still go through to this day that Pete has to help me and encourage me through. Um, but we've chosen to work on those individually and come together as a stronger unit because of that. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's um, easier said than done to be vulnerable mm-hmm. all the time. I'm curious to know with you guys, like how... Flip the podcast. How, how, right? <laughs> how easy or hard is it to be vulnerable with each other to maybe have those tough conversations? Or does it fluctuate as to how easy it is and then maybe one week it's harder? I think it depends on what the subject is. Mm-hmm. Um, some things we can just, we'll go already. And then <laughs> when it gets a little bit deeper, um, that's when I personally get more reluctant. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not, you know, Steph sometimes doesn't like when I say like I'm afraid because mm-hmm. it's like oh well you're gonna make people think I beat you or something mm-hmm. but that's not Same. it's just it's like when you know we spoke about Eli being afraid to tell us something it's like mm-hmm. we don't hit you mm-hmm. yeah. he's just afraid mm-hmm. his iPad might get taken for right. me my the my quote unquote iPad getting taken is just not vibing with my wife like yeah. that's that's my everything like yeah. that that shapes how my day is gonna go mm-hmm. my week yeah. is gonna mm-hmm. go right. Um, so if I walk out this house knowing that shit ain't right, how the fuck am I going to perform at work knowing that I have a wife that could probably give a fuck if I had lunch today, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's where the, the fear comes in. So yeah. it's not, it's not always easy. Um, but I just think, you know, shit, this podcast forces me, challenges me to like push True. myself, um, having, um, friendships like yours where you guys are super vulnerable with us and tell us, you know, even this, like we've had this, like, you know, I'll be honest, we've had this conversation about this yeah. before. And w- even the same questions I'm asking now is the questions I had then. I'm like really amazed by this and seeing where you are now because without hearing this, I'd be like, oh, Tab and P are perfect. Beautiful couple. <laughs> very very, very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what about you? Um, for me, I was always in my family known as like the emotional one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I took things too seriously and I I wanted to talk about feelings and it was seen as like a bad thing. Look at you now. (laughs) Especially when I went to college, I'm the eldest of five. Mm -hmm. So I feel like things I learned in my studies, like in psychology classes and women's studies classes, it opened my brain up to like want to know more things about my family and my family relationships that my family looked at me like I was weird. Like it was uncomfortable. Mm. Like they kind of just didn't deal with those things. Yeah. But with Travis, I feel like even early on, like our first official date, I was like crying at dinner. About like what? I'm Do you remember? I just think we were talking about the future and what we mm. what we had planned and you know, I was basically like just making sh- sure she knew how I felt and I, I was like I got you. Yeah. And you know? were you crying out of vulnerability? I was crying. Yeah, I was crying because we were talking about the future and then he was telling me like, I got you. And then it kind of felt too good to be true, like Mm. like to accept it. Mm. But then also the idea of it being true and like what it meant for me, what it meant for my son. Mm. Like it just Mm. felt overwhelming. Right. Right. Like, is this really happening to my life? And like I told you, I always felt like undeserving of that kind of love. So now in this moment like suddenly like this person is telling me i'm worthy of all these things it was like a lot Mm -hmm. so i was crying on date one um so i feel like it's easier for me to be Mm -hmm. vulnerable Mm -hmm. um but i will say sometimes i wouldn't sit with things and i'd be complaining just to complain so that's something i've had to change and like really sit with my emotions. What do you mean by that? Complaining just to complain. So sometimes I will have a complaint that realistically was a, a me issue, something I could have handled easily mm. or a misunderstanding. Okay. So instead of it being, oh, you're just very vulnerable and emotional, it's like you're irrational and like you're creating problems that aren't real problems. Mm. Mm. I feel like we I feel like we had the opposite problem where as she was just a spitfire, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I was just like holding it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
I don't know. It, yeah. it wasn't working. And so now I feel like we're at a place where she takes a moment and I'm not that I'm a spitfire by any means, but I I'll say a lot more than I would have, you know, a year ago. Yeah. And so you've kind of adjusted and met each other somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And even sometimes when I am still being a spitfire or even if I took time with something and I still and I would apologize, he would always say, it's fine. It's okay. It's no, don't worry. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed with time, he'll be like, yeah, like that was kind of fucked up or like, you know. I was thinking that and he's mm-hmm. communicating cool. with me yeah. in the give and take. And I'm like, thank you. Like, I appreciate that. Like, I need that feedback. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Marriage. Marriage. Bro. So one of the questions I had was, what's something you've had to change about yourself in the relationship? So we just talked about kind of how we handle being vulnerable. You spoke about your issue with lying. Tab, do you think <laughs> there's anything that you've had to change to be better for your relationship? I think there's two big things. Mm -hmm. But again, (laughs) it's some of those things that like I will continue to have to work on. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I would say one is like kind of my rage of emotions and like how erratic and intense they were Mm. because... I have a strong personality. Um, I can be bold in my approaches and whatnot, but I'm coming to learn on one of my individual paths Mm -hmm. that I can be a strong and bold woman and not diminish who who I am in that Mm -hmm. without being mean and scary. Ooh. So like, so that makes a lot of sense. What does that look like on a day to day basis for you? For somebody that's listening, right? He's asking that on there, there, there could be somebody listening and watching right now. It's like, yo, I'm I can maybe be big and scary, bold and scary, but how how do you do that without diminishing who you are? Uh how do I do that, baby? Um You tell me. Um You do it well. Now. Thank you. I had to learn how to be vulnerable. Because a lot of my mean and scary came from a response to emotions I was feeling. And it was a cover up. Mm. It was, Travis said the word earlier and I can't think of it. Um, But it was a cover up to shield whatever I was feeling in that moment. So I got angry. And I think that goes back to what I was brought up in that you showed emotions in anger and in just craziness Mm -hmm. so and we just had this conversation in the car as well that when i'm overwhelmed or that's my that's the easy response for Mm. me so what that looks like on a day-to-day is maybe taking an extra minute of i need to get my emotions together what am i actually feeling yeah i need to yes i need to regroup my emotions i need to settle down Mm -hmm. i need to regulate and then we could revisit this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like he said, his um, like adaptive response is fawn. Mine is both fight or flight mm. where I'll fight you or I'm like, I'm leaving. Mm. Right. Um, and that's also mean and scary because then I'm not approaching my husband with love. Um, so that's I've learned that I need to have conversations in love, but I need to take my time to be able to have that conversation because I can't do it in the moment because my emotions are way too high. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've set a boundary, which was discussed that we're the person who is triggered and the person that is emotionally heightened sets the boundary of we can revisit at X time and we have to revisit at X time. Even if you're not ready at X time, we revisit it. Do you still need more time? Are you ready to have this conversation? Mm -hmm. But there has to be. Um, a concrete time or date set so that the conversation doesn't go undone Mm. and continue to snowball and become something bigger so that we address these conversations. So it's like, I'm respecting that you need the space, Mm -hmm. but you need to respect that eventually I want to come back to this. And it's better for the relationship that we have this conversation and work through this together. Um, So that's been a huge thing for me. And it still is to this day because just it's easier for me to respond out of anger Mm -hmm. um, and just a quick response. Cause I just, I'm a, I'm a hot fire. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. it's just how I'm wired. So 
I need to take that time and then remember that he's a safe space for me to respond in love and vulnerability and be Mm -hmm. like, hey, I actually felt whatever, or I was triggered by this and that stems back to my childhood or I felt Mm -hmm. whatnot. And I know he loves me and I know he's going to meet me with love. Um, And that's just kind of what that looks like for me. It's hard. Oh, well but said. <laughs> yeah, hey, well said. It's hard. Yeah. So that's one of my biggest things. And then just selfishness I've had to address on like a day-to-day level. Like this is my juice and don't touch my juice and <laughs> like stupid stuff. Yeah, we but had, it's a we real had an thing. argument about juice the other um, day. <laughs> he still drank my juice today, but <laughs> <laughs> and that's also something I knew I had to address with having a child also, because I can't be like that. But it's a childhood response so Mm -hmm. that's a smaller thing and that's more surface general but definitely the anger and whatnot because Mm -hmm. i still want to be a strong bold woman this perfectly leads me to my final like question that i have for you all married at 21 i keep repeating that (laughs) but then i feel like that's the title (laughs) (laughs) but then you were it was just the two of you for the first four years right yes and now you have a daughter. Yeah. How does that change things? Boots. 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 Like, how does that change your dynamic, your relationship? What was the biggest <laughs> adjustment? Bro. Uh, is, is, that, is that crazy? The, 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 it, it's, we talk about this nearly every day, which is the biggest adjustment is. We miss like, each other. We miss each other. Mm. She's my best friend. We're together like every day. We're together every day, but we're not together at the capacity that we were for four mentally years. Mentally and emotionally. Mentally and emotionally. I love going out, taking her out to a nice dinner. We go to watch a movie. A or, movie. Or we just, maybe we'll just have a, a day where we're chilling at home, you know, watching Avengers movies Marvel and whatnot. Movies, Marvel movies, yeah. Great times, right? But we love being parents. But we also value our relationship first more than anything. Fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. But, um, canceled. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, for real. Our yeah. marriage comes first. And it's hard when you have such a small child that fully relies on you mm-hmm. um, at all hours of the day and night. <laughs> all hours. Um, so it's definitely a thing where we sit down at the end of the day and we are spent, exhausted. And he'll be like, F work. F this, please just sit on the couch with me and watch TV because it's just that foundational piece of connecting on emotional and mental level and physical um, Mm -hmm. that we need to regroup and get on. But we don't get that as often. So I would think that's been the biggest adjustment is finding a balance of how do we still connect in these small pockets that we have on a day to day and making sure that I still feel loved my cup is still being full in that. And how do I still love him and make sure that he feels that throughout the day? Now that we have limited time. Yeah. In you, small pockets. You know what, though? As you're saying all this and we're talking about it, I feel like I actually have an improper expectation that I set within myself. Mm. Meaning I still want the capacity of time and effort and love and physical touch that we that I experienced for for the for the first four years, which is unrealistic yeah. at this point in my life, right? Because I always go back to like a time where I, it was like a little golden era in 2019. Golden, we were young, we were making good money, we we're constantly going out, traveling, we were great with our finances, we we're traveling, and I kind of live in that often, which leads to disappointment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have it's just an improper expectation. What so. about resentment? I, I, I wouldn't say resentment. Um, it's, yeah, I would say just just more disappointment than anything. Just because I, I'm I'm constantly living like, in the past. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. living in the past, and mm-hmm. I'm searching for that that high of like, oh yeah, yeah I'm back in it. Like we're back good. in my glory days. Yeah, yeah. my glory days, right? Um, so yeah, as you're saying this, it I I'm now going to have to process like, no, I, we aren't living in that space anymore. It's not just us, right? Because obviously, I know we have a child, mm-hmm. but. Um, there's a part of me that that it, I guess it's tough to die to that part. Yeah, of, of, it's just a reminder that our relationships are going to continue to evolve, right? Word. Even when you first in 2018 had a conversation about boundaries, yeah, those boundaries are going to change as you experience new things, you learn more things, right? Mm-hmm. 
having children is going to change mm-hmm. our relationship yeah. and just learning how to roll with the punches like they say we do have we don't have weekly marriage meetings yeah but we do come together and we're like okay what does loving like filling up your cup look like in this season and Mm -hmm. regrouping because i think the biggest part of it is the communication um communicating your expectations because with a lot of unmet expectations you have disappointment Mm -hmm. and that leads to resentment which thankfully it hasn't in our situation um but i think if you don't have those important conversations and those marriage meetings um there's a resource on the website (laughs) um then that snowballs into that where we've been not as diligent but still diligent to have those tough conversations and say all Mm -hmm. right how can i love you better what am i not doing what do i need you to do Mm -hmm. um and just coming back to each other remembering why we're doing this and Mm -hmm. what's at the foundation the other day um steph was like i need to have a meeting and in my head, when she said it, like I, you know, I'm trying I'm in to trouble. Be, no, I'm trying to do better at not making everything a joke, right? But uh, <laughs> when she said, when she said, I need a meeting, I was like, it was like, like fucking AA, like, <laughs> you know, like I'm about to have a drink, like that's what immediately. But yeah. when you oh think about God. it, there's like, there's like a correlation there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she's like, I'm spiraling, and I need, this. I need this oh. to ground me. Mm-hmm. And we had a meeting, wow. and I think we had two mm-hmm. that week because one was like half ass, and then we mm-hmm. had like a really good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it shows how much like it brought her back like wow. I, I don't know if you want to say it grounded her brought her back to reality whatever the case is it but. gives me structure like yeah i'm very vocal about what i need right so the marriage meetings like the way you just spoke about it is like it gives us space to talk about what we need to fill our cup i'm constantly aware of what i feel like i need in the moment but It'll be three different things in a day. So in a mm. week, three times seven, that's 21 things that I need. And then I become like overwhelmed. Like yes. there's too much shit. So the meetings for me help me like narrow them down mm-hmm. and pick what I could focus one at a time in a structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For tr- Travis, it's like he would just be content. If without the meeting, I would never know what he needs or wants mm. because he's just living life like peaceful, chilling. But that could also lead to resentment because right. I couldn't read his mind. Right. And yeah. he never told me what he needed. So we need the meetings both for different reasons. Yeah. It reminds me of like working out. Like that mental struggle just to start working out is is a lot. But once you're in it, you're like, oh, I could have did this 30 minutes ago and it would have been great. Yeah. So it's the same with the meetings. Like once we're in it, I'm loving it. Like. I wish we would have did it sooner. Yeah. And we struggle. Like, we talk about the meetings. We have the template on our website. That doesn't mean we do them every week. Mm-hmm. Like, the last one we had, or the one before that, we looked and we're like, it's been a month. Because we take mm-hmm. notes. Mm-hmm. We're like, we didn't even realize we let a whole month go by. Mm-hmm. And just like working out. You're like, oh shit, I haven't done it in forever. Mm-hmm. Right. Then you finally do it. You're like, I should have been did this. Mm-hmm. I waste mm-hmm. 30 minutes on my phone scrolling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could dedicate 30 minutes to something that's really important to me. And our marriage is like the most important thing right. to us, you know? Yeah. Good analogy, babe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're pretty much wrapping up. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel like we need like a part two, three, four. Right? right? This, ain't, this ain't the last this time. This is y'all a series. Here. They're yeah, on an episode on Patreon where we kind of go over our Ooh, vacation to Florida and yeah. it was like a shit show. Tea. Juicy. <laughs> tea. And all of the interactive recaps are under the $3 tier. So if you sign up for Patreon and the, join the $3 tier, you can get all of the past interactive recaps and that does include the one with Pete and Tab. And we'll be back for part two. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Very soon. Very soon. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of stuff we didn't even still get so to much on surface. Mm-hmm. We yeah. did a lot of intro mm-hmm. and then lying. You gotta keep oh. them wanting more. <laughs> you gotta keep mm-hmm. them wanting. See you in December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need a part two definitely. Um, I think before we sign off, you know, I just want to thank Tab and Pete. Um, you know, it always surprises me at this grown age that. You still find people you can call friends and connect. We're with. making new friends that yeah. are like 
the same way we fell in love super fast. Like mm. we fell in love we with did Tyler and that. me, same like way. super fast. Like, same way. We moved fast. Like, we, we, have, moved we have quick. a group chat. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a there's a genuine love here, and I I appreciate you both, um, together and individual. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, Pete, you're my guy. My guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just thank you, thank you for um coming into our lives. Yes, and being vulnerable and oh. open. My heart. We'll hug <laughs> after this. <laughs> but I appreciate that, and we love you guys so much. Yeah, we love you and guys. your little twos. Yeah. <laughs> babies and yeah. boots we all just became like a big family we're all just one big joke that relationship. like we're gonna all move into a massive house together and just share it <laughs> soon come soon come. <laughs> all right so we always end our episodes and we ask each other a question we're gonna ask y'all do, do you, you still, still like us? us yes absolutely even more now yeah, oh, yeah. totally <laughs> we did it <laughs> we did it y'all thank you all see you next time peace, peace.